Hi, David and Chair Deepak. Uh, we're uh, making some more time to talk about uh, some of the features within CloudStack uh, from the network side. Uh, we, uh, we're constantly concerned, particularly in a multi-tenant situation with security, and so uh, firewall and, and other kinds of things are important to us. So uh, what, what kind of uh, services does CloudStack offer from, from kind of that protection angle? Yeah, I think we already talked about security groups and basic yeah. zones, so that's, if you leave that aside, in the advanced virtual, we offer very powerful firewall features. Mm -hmm. Firewall, NAT, and port forwarding functionalities. So let's talk about firewall. Firewall lets you ask, you know, restrict access to your uh, VMs in the cloud on any protocol or any port. Mm -hmm. So whether it's TCP, UDP, or ICMP, and then you can specify the port. Right. And uh, and so typically, you, know, you would you know, restrict port A to the load balancers and or, uh, to the to the uh, to the web servers, and then you know, twenty five to the mail servers and so on. Right. So so that's just your typical standard firewall. It's just Making that available into the cloud, right? That's right. Yes. Um, and so that's that's actually the the direct connection to uh, to a um, to a virtual machine. Uh, assuming there's direct network connectivity, what are some of the other things that the CloudStack does to to kind of protect and hide networks? So once you do uh, the so the firewall lets you restrict specific. Uh, Ports and then source IPs. Sure. And, and then once you do that, you can say, well, I have only one public IP before addresses. Address. So then you can say, well, I want to port forward port 22 to a particular VM so mm -hmm. that I can access port 22 there. And then if you have more than one VM, then you can start using additional public ports. Right. And then port forward them to specific VMs. So, so people are people are probably used to this from their home their home exactly. router. You yeah. know, they they want to get uh, to port twenty two on their Linux box and port thirty three eighty nine to their Windows box. So this still allows them to take that one public IP one public IP address and they could address you know relatively unlimited number of, of virtual machines on various ports. That's right. So that's the port forwarding feature, and then if you want, you know, really high throughput uh, or um, or more traditional hosting kind of thing, you can do something like static mm -hmm. where you take one public IP and then forward all the traffic on the public IP to a uh, one VM, mm -hmm. uh, and then when the VM talks back out, it uses that IP as a source IP. Right. So it, it's that's the uh, one to one. You're just passing one -one. the traffic. Exactly. Along. But on, on top of that, you can still do firewall. In the Sure, sure. Um, that's uh, that's interesting. You know, certainly from an enterprise and from a from your traditional data center, you've been having firewalls was, was kind of an assumed thing, and uh, you know, with the exception of security groups in the cloud, that the idea of being able to control for the user to be able to control their networking, uh, manning and firewall uh, is uh, is quite a thing. Uh, quite an impressive thing. Uh, anything else that we we should be thinking about from from a firewall perspective or from a uh, the, the same services are available when you use an external firewall. So if you oh. use a Juniper SRX, yeah. it's the exact same features are available. So so you could have that that physical piece of hardware that you normally wouldn't let uh, one of your end users exactly. have an account on. Yeah. And they can use CloudStack to configure that. That's right. So a device which was not multi-tenant before suddenly becomes multi-tenant. Multi-tenant. So so effectively, CloudStack acts as the gatekeeper, goes and configures it. That's right. Uh, so so you mentioned that uh, the Juniper device uh, effectively, uh, from what I understand, uh, we made the design decision to to support network devices that have an API exposed. That's correct. Yes. Uh, and uh, can. Just for just for informational purposes, can can you explain why that's important? Um, it's because when 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 the cloud stack users call an API call on cloud stack to configure a firewall, we need an automated way to talk to the firewall. Mm -hmm. And if the firewall device has you know just the traditional CLI, it just becomes very hard uh, right. because the error it's, it's not a true API. It's, you're trying to pretend to be a human. Mm -hmm. And that just doesn't work very well. It's but error prone. It just uh, and does it scale to thousands of users, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. Uh, that's uh, so you can use your your traditional already paid for 
That's uh, right. network device. And, yeah. and so, you know, I know the uh, I know there are a number of folks out there who are uh, who like APIs, and I think that's uh, APIs are going to be coming more and more to to um, to some of the uh, the network devices. Absolutely. I mean, we see the, the traditional networking vendors move towards that. Even we, we already had Viada doing this as a virtual appliance. Mm -hmm. And I think with the 3.0, we need to find far, far, far easier to insert uh, appliances like Viada mm -hmm. into cloud stack instead of our distribution of the virtual mm -hmm. And uh, we find, you know, Folks like Juniper bringing out their own virtual firewall. Mm -hmm. uh, Cisco has uh, something in the works called uh, Overdrive, which can control their devices. It's an API. Oh, really? That will so it, it, you know, it'll be fantastic when you can. Right. Uh, so, so our so cloud stack scope is going to increase. And that's right. And, and we already have hooks in place to do these things. Outstanding. Well, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about firewalls and uh, and that. Thanks. Okay.